So hi guys, today we're going to be discussing accounting for the division of profits and losses for a partnership. Generally, a partnership, just like any other business, will earn profits from its operations. However, unlike a sole proprietor who gets all the profits from the business, a partnership would require a more complicated process of dividing profits and losses among its partners. But before we move on, here are a few important things that you need to know. First thing to remember is that two equity accounts are maintained for each partner in the partnership books. These would be the capital and the drawing accounts. Permanent withdrawals are close to the capital account, while temporary withdrawals are close to the drawing account. For partnerships, a partner's share in net income is credited to the drawing account. Here. So this is different from a sole proprietor where income is close to the capital account. For partnerships, a partner's share in net income is recorded by debiting an income summary and crediting their drawing accounts. Now, if you remember, drawing accounts are close to capital accounts in a sole proprietorship. However, this is not the case for partnerships. The entry to record a partner's share in net income would be a debit to income summary and a credit to their drawing accounts. For a sole proprietorship, the drawing accounts are close to the capital accounts afterwards. However, the drawing accounts are normally not close to capital accounts for partnerships. But if the Articles of Co-Partnership specifically indicates that the balance in the drawing account will be made permanent, the respective shares should be close to the capital accounts. The tricky part now would be to determine how much a partner's share should be. There are actually different methods of dividing profits and losses between or among partners. One way would be to divide the income equally. Another would be through the use of arbitrary ratio, which can be in the form of fractions, percentages, or ratio and proportion. You could also use the capital ratio, which could be based on the original or initial investment, the beginning capital balance, ending capital balance, or the average capital balance. The most equitable methods of these, however, would be the use of average capital balance. Note that original investment may be equal to beginning capital, but it is not always the case. For example, the beginning capital balance on the first year of operations will be equal to the original investment. Additional investments or withdrawals during the year, however, may change the balance of the capital at the end of the first year. This means that the beginning capital balance for the second year will no longer be equal to the original investment. Another method of dividing profits and losses is by providing salaries, bonuses, and interest. Salaries are amounts given to partners for the services rendered. Bonuses are incentives given to managing partners. Interest, on the other hand, is an amount given as a return for the capital invested. Note that salaries and interests are provided whether the company earns profits or losses, but bonuses are only given when the partnership earns profits. Another point to remember is that salaries, bonuses, and interest allowances are not expenses. Rather, they are a means of profit distribution. Division of profits and losses should be in accordance to partnership agreement. When there is none, the division should be based on their capital balances. The financial statements of a partnership are more or less similar to that of a sole proprietorship except for a few differences. These can be seen on the income statement, the statement of changes in equity, and the statement of financial position. No changes can be seen in the statement of cash flows. So the main difference for the income statement is that a new portion is added, which is the schedule of income distribution. So this is basically what we did earlier. So it's a schedule which shows the division of profits and losses among partners. The rest of the income statement is the same with that of a sole proprietorship.
For the statement of changes in equity, you see that it has the same components as that of a sole proprietorships, but now there's a difference because you just have to add a separate column for each of the partners. And lastly, we have the statement of financial position, which is still the same, except now you have to list down the capital balances separately for the partners, and you have to call it partners' equity here. So that's the differences. So this is just a simplified version since I just need to show you the areas or portions where the changes occur. So, so there you have it. I hope you learned a lot today.